One of the key things that influences the backscatter that you see in a radar image is the frequency or wavelength at which it's been measured. Depending on whether or not you're measuring at C-band or X-band or longer wavelengths like L or P can have a huge influence in the backscatter that you will measure. A good example of that is in vegetation. So with short wavelengths, you're mostly interacting with the smaller elements of a vegetation canopy. Wavelengths of C and X-band, say, that are only a few centimetres long will mostly interact with the twigs and the leaves and the needles of a vegetation canopy. So mostly what you're seeing are variations that are due to those small components. When you get to longer wavelengths, so L and P, where it's many tens of centimetres, you're starting to see bigger components of the vegetation canopy. The backscatter is then more related to the size and structure of the branches, or for the very long wavelengths, you might be seeing things that are related to the changes in the stem and the trunks of the trees. These larger properties are then much more closely related to things like above ground biomass. And that's why longer wavelengths like LNP have a much closer relationship to the biomass of a forest. The higher the biomass and the more material there is in the forest, especially in the larger components like the trunks and the larger branches, the larger the backscatter you'll get at the longer wavelengths like L and P band. One of the key things about the size of wavelength and the scatterers is that as you get to longer wavelengths, it interacts less with the smaller components. So as you get to long wavelengths like L or P band, many tens of centimetres, the smaller elements in say a vegetation canopy, like the leaves and the small twigs, have less impact on the microwaves that are passing through the canopy. The wavelengths tend to interact more with objects that are similar in size to the wavelength.